G'day, Fide Master John Curtis from Australia. And do we have a good game for you? Um, both Fide Masters are battling to try to get over 2100. Um, the Magician, myself, I'm playing the white pieces. Um, Fide Master John Curtis from Australia. And playing the black pieces, we have Fide Master from the United States, William Schill. Now, uh, for the purposes of this game, it's a three-minute odd game on um, on chess.com. And um, uh, I've rated 2,096 for the purposes of this game. And William Schill is 2,091. So, no doubt both of us have had a rough trot in the Blitz. We're both trying to climb back to 2,100. So this is how the game panned out. And there's some very, very instructional ideas in this particular game for the beginners. And no doubt, um, perhaps William Schill, um, the FM, I, th I think he's from Seattle. Uh, he, he belongs to Seattle Chess Club, I think. Anyway, perhaps he might show the, this game to his students um, uh, because there's a lot of instructional ideas in there um, and uh, tactical and positional ideas. So um, without further ado, we're going to get straight into this game and I'm going to, going to uh, try to um, elaborate all the ideas that are, that are taking place during the game, right? And the game changes. Uh, one minute's equal, next minute he's got the advantage, he's winning. And then he blows it, and then I've got the advantage, I blow it. And then eventually um, uh, you'll see the outcome of the game. And you, I think you might enjoy this. If you like a good chess battle, well, this is one of them, right? Really was. He played a tough game, right? So I'm going to give my opponent, Fide Master William Michel, lots of applause. Win or lose, he was in the fight, and my God, he battled hard. I played c4, and uh, he played g6. So we just got standard uh, opening ideas. He fianchettoed his bishop, and this bishop was later to give me a lot of trouble because uh, I, I was uh, negligent in ignoring the power of the black squares uh, control, which I, I always talk about, but there, there you go. I made that mistake of ignoring it. Played g3. It's a book move. It's okay. Position's equal. Played knight c6. You can see the bar on the side of the board if you're wondering who's winning and who's losing. Uh, I played knight f3. I just wanted to castle quickly, get my knights out. Finish out of my bishop and castle. And then we'll try to work out what's going on from there. He played e5. It's a, a great move. A great move by uh, our Fido Master William Schill. Play bishop g2, and uh, I'm not worried about any uh, attack at the moment. He's not threatening anything. I've got full control of the uh, central squares, so I don't have to worry about any attack from him. So I'm just going to castle, which is what I did. It's an excellent move. That's what the engine says. He played f5. Excellent. Solid choice. And uh, it is a solid choice. And he does give me a bit of grief. But I, I come up with a few brilliant moves. I played at 84% accuracy. That's right, 84%. Maybe a little bit higher. Anyway, it might have been 86% accuracy. So just nudging under 90%. He played knight to f6. Now, I thought of bishop g5 here. Let's see what the engine says. I played bishop d2 and the engine says it's an inaccuracy. The move doesn't hurt me much, but it doesn't help either. Now perhaps the right move is just go and pin the knight. Let's have a look. See what the engine says about that move. The engine's thinking, thinking, thinking. The bar on the side of the board still says equal. There we go. Um, it's, it's trying to work it out. It's that complicated that the chess engine in the analysis room at chess.com, it's thinking, it's still working. It doesn't normally take this long. So it's taking its time. It's uh, 
very complicated position. The engine's not sure. It's, oh, by the way, the opening that I've played is called the English opening, and it's called the Great Snake Variation. That's right. This opening is called the Great Snake Variation. Yeah, actually, I might change the name of the video. <laughs> the English opening, Great Snake Variation. I, I love it. Okay. Right. Yeah, so I should play Knight D5. Interesting. So I can see that... I, it was in this position I wasn't sure, I didn't know what to do. So I played bishop to d2 and developed the piece. Okay. So the correct move is knight to d5. Position is still equal. He castled. I played rook to b1. I thought, oh, maybe I can just play b4 and b5 and kick his knight and gain some space on the queen side. Because I know he's going to eventually attack me on the king side. If he can whip, whip up an attack, he will. He played a, a5. The engine gave him a star move. Well done, Fide Master William Schill. Um, I played a3 because I still want to play my, B, my b4 move, but he slowed me down a little bit. Now he plays h6. Well, I played queen to c1. I threatened this pawn. And uh, the engine says it's a good move. It said b4 was best. Um... He played king h7, right? And uh, the engine didn't like that. Engine liked g5 straight away as a, a better alternative. He might have been frightened that I might take it off. But um, uh, I played b4 now because I'm expanding on the queen side and I let him worry about the king side. He took a pawn, I took a pawn, and he developed a piece. Now... The engine says, no, you should have played g5, right? You should have played g5. And uh, now he's got a problem. He can't play g5. I'll show you why. I pushed the pawn on his knight. His knight retreated there. And then I played bishop here, right? <coughs> oh, no, my bishop, I said. Oh, no, my bishop. Uh, right? I said, oh, no, my bishop. But I got a double exclamation mark from the uh, from the chess engine for that move. The bar on the side of the board says black's okay. But still, even though he's he's got a better position, um, I was very happy to get the double excla exclamation mark from the chess engine. Right? It's like being parented by your school teacher, and they give you a, a little star in your book, but they give you two stars instead of one. I remember when I was a child, I used to get the gold stars. Uh, queen to d7 was played. He connects his rooks. The engines love this. They love this move. So the Fide Master, William Schill, United States, he's playing good chess. And he's got an advantage. Anyway, so I took the knight. Star move, best move. Again, I'm playing accurately. Oh, you might say, oh, you know, I, I didn't mention it, did I? In this position, he can't take the bishop because knight takes pawn check, wins the bishop and the queen or the rook, okay? So that's why he couldn't take that. Queen to d7, bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop. Now, black's still got an advantage, but it's a bit, bit smaller, a bit smaller. That's because one piece has been exchanged. Anyway, so I played knight to d2. I should play queen to c2. Remember when I, I mentioned queen here and the engines love this connectivity at the back rank? Well, similarly in this position, the engines like the connectivity of the white rooks on the back rank. Okay? Anyway, I played knight there. And, and it is a bit slow. I don't know what else to do here. And he played c, c6. So I played, I played e4. e4. I thought to myself, I want to stop the move d5. And and the truth was that I couldn't see a clear way for him to attack. Oh, yeah, he can chase me back and block me up. But can he checkmate me, right? He's only got three minutes after all. Actually, this, minute, this game is uh, three minutes plus, three, uh, three plus two. So every time you make a move, you gain two seconds or something. Anyway, so he played pawn there, and I thought, oh, what do I do here? So I, I played queen to c2. Now, I shouldn't take the pawn, right? I should take the pawn because uh, uh, it, it's it's probably the best move, right? Because I haven't got a bishop on the diagonal because I've blocked it with pawn here. So I should really take the pawn. 
try to swap as many pieces off as possible. Anyway, now he plays G5. Now, Black's winning this. He's uh, got a pawn, a pawn uh, mass coming towards my king, supported by heavy pieces. And, uh, yeah, he's got a good game. So I played Rook hits Rook. Now, I, I think he should move his Rook away. I don't think he should take change Rooks. He played Knight to G6, and I was happy about that. You know what the engine suggested? The engine said, come and go and get him, G5. And Black's winning if he plays that. That's the best move. G4, I should say. But he played Knight G6, and so he gives me a little breather. The one thing you can't do when you're playing the Fide Master, well, he's a Fide Master too, but you can't give the opponent a breather because then they can claw their way back into the position. So look at the bar on the side of the board. Don't forget we've got two Fide Masters here, both battling it out for 2100 rating. One is 2091, William Schill from uh, the United States and uh, Australia Fide Master the Magician is 2096. But can we get to 2100? Let's have, have a look. Well, I, played the, I took the rook off. I want to exchange pieces because I thought the more pieces are off the board, the less likely it is that he can checkmate me, right? Okay, so he, he captured with the rook. And now I thought, what do I do here? And I thought, well, I, I, I should play rook to b1, but I took a pawn and just to, just to make a quick move and get him down to 1 minute 47, try to put a bit of psychological pressure on him, but that he doesn't get affected. He's a fide master, right? He recaptured with the pawn. I played rook to b1. It's the open file. So both players have got an open file. Now, uh, William's got the uh, Fido Master William Shill's got the A file, and I've got the B file, right? So there's a bit of push and pull. Only trouble is my king's being attacked, and his king's not attacked as yet. Anyway, he played G4, and the engine says this is a good move, but Rook A5 was best. Okay, so Rook A5 is the best move. So in this position, my best move was c4. You know, I actually thought about this move for a second, and uh, I didn't didn't play it. But uh, that looks like a good, good little move. Okay. Try to disrupt his pawns a bit. You've got to try to disrupt his pawns. He's doing too well in the position. Well, he's winning, isn't he? Right? Anyway, so I played rook b1. And he played g4. And now he should play rook, that rook a5. Now play queen to b2. And the engine gives me a smack on the hand that says, Fido Master Johnny Curtis, you're a mug. Right? I should have played c5, it says. Anyway, he played pawn there. My idea was I, at some stage I wanted to change queens. Try to save myself from a... Uh, uh, from, from a... Uh, an, a, a terrible position, right? Anyway, so he pushed the pawn, and that's wrong. Engine didn't like that move. It said the engine said bishop here is better. You see, that would have threatened pawn here wins a piece, right? And black and black would win if uh, I didn't save something. But it's a good move, bishop there. Uh, doesn't win a piece, but queen's protecting it. But it's it's fun and games anyway. The engine likes it. So he pushed the pawn on my bishop. I was happy about that. So I moved my bishop back. Star move, best move. <laughs> Not too bad, eh? There we go. So he, he did that. And oh, the beauty of this position is when I analyze it is I'm protecting my pawn. And he can't really back rank checkmate me or anything. And he can't really get his bishop to attack my bishop easily. It's hard to get through. Meanwhile, I could play a few little moves to slow his attack down. Anyway, he played c4, c5, and I thought to myself, you beauty, the only piece that I, I can't get is knight working for the life of me. And that's why earlier in this position, the engine kept saying pawn here is must be played, right? And now he, he stopped it. Now, uh, not for the right reason, because now what he's done is he's allowed my knight to poke into that dirty big hole. And I'm threatening knight takes bishop check, 
Knight takes bishop check, wins the queen. It's a big threat. Right. He doesn't like that. He took the uh, the knight. Well, he shouldn't. He should move his bishop back. So this knight is very powerful. But the trouble with this knight is uh, this knight is useless. It can't take the pawn. It can't go here and block the queen. It's pretty useless knight. But when he takes the knight, which is what he does, he makes a big mistake. Because watch what I do. I, re I recapture the wrong way. That's right, the wrong way. The engine doesn't like my move. Uh, it says I should take with the um, oh, with the uh, C pawn. I can see why. Uh, but I had other ideas. I'll show you what ideas I had. Right? I had a few surprise uh, surprises for him. Anyway, he played knight there. And so I thought, well, I'll go up there and attack his bishop. And he moved his bishop back. Well, there's a problem moving the bishop back, and that is the queen comes in there. Well, you know what? The engine says this is a mistake. It does. The engine says this moves a mistake. So what should white have played? Well, in this position, h3. Right? Should try to undermine these pawns. H3 is best. You've got to try to undermine those pawns and open up that king. If he wants to play pawn, he's got to open his king. Right? So, but I should play pawn there. But I played queen there. It's not too bad because it threatens his queen. Positions are equal. Notice the bar on the side of the board. We had a loss game before. And now all this has happened because he played this c5 move. Right uh, Now... Uh, we've got an equal position. The position is equal with good defence. But it's not easy to defend these positions. Right? He played rook there. He thought, well, if uh, I, he should take the queen, apparently. But uh, now, now that he's played rook there, I can take his queen. Engine says, no, don't take it. Play queen to b8. Well, I'll tell you, these engines know what they're doing, don't they? Well... My move is plus 2.87, queen takes d7, and queen takes b8, oh, so queen to b8 is uh, three, plus 3.57. Okay, but white's winning now. Rook takes, now rook here, rook hits pawn, and rook to b6 is a good move. It says h3 was actually better, right? So h3 was actually a better move. Right? Anyway... He's still got to defend the pawn. See, he played knight there. It's it's now that I start my mischief. Watch this. What do I do here? Well, I play h3. And the engine gives me an exclamation mark. That's right. The engine gives me an exclamation mark. Because I'm simply threatening pawn takes pawn. What does he do about that? Well, he played h5. Right? He's connecting, which is right, really, when you think about it from a practical point of view. It, it protects it, right? So I took the pawn off. Wrong move. Engine says that in this position, I should complicate it and sacrifice a pawn with d4. Okay? But um, I'm playing my own game here, Mr. Engine. So I'll do things when I'm ready. So I took a pawn, he took a pawn, and what did I play? Star move, best move, I saw it, that's right. With a limited amount of time on my clock, I found this beautiful move. And do you know something? It's not easy to find a move like this in chess. So I, I might actually refer this uh, move to my good friend, at Don't Mo Aiden, at uh, Don't Move Until You See It, right? Because to find a good move like that, in a limited time, and it's the best move on the board, is not an easy thing to do. Anyway, he, sh he took the pawn. Now he should take the other way. He took the wrong way. And I played bishop to d3 exclamation mark. I'm getting all these exclamation marks, aren't I? Right. I like the bishop g5 double exclamation mark earlier too. The engine said that was a hard move to find, but I'm getting lots of exclamation marks. Now have a look at the bar on the side of the board. So I've sacrificed a pawn, but why have we done all this, right? Well, the reason we've done it is because the bishop is attacking the king. 
the, the bishops attacking the knight as well, right? So bishops also attacking the knight with a discovery. Knight check. Knight uh, knight hits rook. So knight hits rook, and if you take the knight, bishop takes knight check, right? So knight there. If pawn takes knight, bishop takes knight check, and you win the rook. So now he's got some things he's got to worry about. He's got 49 seconds left on the clock. He knows he wants to get to 2100. He's got to find a good move. What's he going to do? Well, he moved his king back. He thought, I don't know what to do. I don't like the pin. See, he's a master. He, he tries to get out of the pin. But what he, what he forgets is the knight's coming in to get him. Now I'm threatening bishop takes knight. Bishop takes knight. And my bishop is a powerhouse. What a wonderful pawn sacrifice this was. Right? What a, what a wonderful pawn sacrifice this move was. Right? Pawn to d4. This is the, the cruncher. This, I, re, I reckon I should get three, three exclamation marks for that move. Anyway, he took a pawn. I played bishop there. He moved his king back. So I gave him a knight move. A knight move. I'm threatening his knight. Now he's got, the, oh, the purpose, oh, it's, it's a twofold purpose. When you play knight here, it covers this square and that square, right? So that, that's almost a checkmate, right? And at the same time, we're threatening the knight. So what does he do? Well, there's not much he can do. He moves his knight back there. It was not the best move. Knight e3 was best. Have a look at the best move, will you, in this position. Whoops. Have a look at the best move in this position. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, in this position, the best move is knight to e3. That's right, knight to e3 is the best move, okay? Okay, what, what a crazy move that is. But the engine says, you lost anyway, just try something. Because the bar on the board, side of the board says that uh, I'm uh, winning by a mile. Anyway, he played knight there. So what do we do now? Well, we give him a check. That was the purpose of covering these two squares. So his king can't escape. His bishop goes back, and now knight there. And that, that he can't defend the bishop. And we're threatening rook takes bishop check. We're going to clean up. We're going to take everything off the board. And so it's now that he resigned. He just resigned. There's just nothing he can do in this position. Okay, because rook takes bishop, it's checkmate. Look at this. If I if he makes any move, he may, if say he made a, a uh, say he made a rook move or something, uh, I just take checkmate. Right? It's a checkmate threat. Right. So there's nothing he can do. So it was in this position that uh, he was. I think he uh, he might have got flagged on time. Um, but I, th I thought he resigned, but he might have got flagged on time. But that opening was called the Great Snake Variation, right? And uh, I, I saw a video once on YouTube. I'm going to digress a little bit because I like to tell stories. But I saw a video on YouTube. It was called the Hunt for the the the, uh, the Hunt for the uh, the Greatest Snake. Or the hunt for the biggest snake, it was called. And uh, they found the biggest snake in the world. Oh, what, they used to eat the local children and the people in the village. It's true. They used to eat the people. So it was a huge snake. And it was living inside a tree. But they hunted all over the world, looking in the rivers, the Amazon. The, he went to the zoos and measured each snake and everything. And it was the hunt for the, the world's greatest snake. And at, at the end, there was a special ceremony. But just in case you find the video, um, I don't want to spoil it for you. Anyway, um, I hope you really enjoyed this game between uh, Fido Master William Schill and myself. And... Um, we, um, I wonder what my rating is now. I think I must have got to 2100. Um, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have been far off. I might, I might have only got one rating point because uh, we're so closely uh, rated 2091 versus 2096. But uh, if you want to uh, follow my uh, YouTube channel, please do so by subscribing and click on the thumbs up button if you would. It's all free on YouTube to watch 
and uh, then you'll be if you if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll be uh, told of any other future YouTube videos I post, and you can go and watch them. Okay, so oh, and um, you might want to look at my previous YouTube video, uh, not the last one, but the one before that. It was uh, got a lot of favour. Um, was I play the Grandmaster? Nihal Saran when he was 10 years of age and uh, a lot of people loved that. Um, I didn't even know at the time that he was a grandmaster. I really didn't. And uh, at the time he was only 2200 and now today he's uh, number in the top 40 in the world, top 30 in the world or whatever it is. Yeah, so that was uh, Grandmaster Nihal Saran. He was a child prodigy chest child prodigy. So when he was only 10 years old, he had a rating of 2250. I didn't believe him. He told me he was 10 years old. I didn't believe him, but he was. There we go. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go now. Uh, otherwise, I waffle on too much. I, I enjoyed your company. I hope you enjoyed mine. Okay, God bless you all. And until next time, Freedom Master Johnny Curtis saying, Arrivederci.